on a week ahead and what a week ahead it is the Federal Reserve kicking things off followed by the ECB and the Bank of England the big conversation is very much about liftoff when do we get that liftoff what's the sequencing of the whole thing and then what are the limits of that effort to raise interest rates joining us now is Jill Carey Hall Greg Peters and Patrick Palfrey still with us Greg I want to come to you on sequencing and then I'll come to you on the equity market Jill thank you for being so patient with us Greg the sequencing here is that confusing to you from the ECB just one official I know slightly hawkish maybe very very contrarian to consider him an outlier would it be complex to say we'll continue doing QE but you know what let's hike interest rates yeah I, I mean it doesn't make much sense clearly uh, but it, it but it speaks to just how the communication is so varied and so confusing across the board and so you're having a lot of rhetoric coming out of all central banks um, uh, and it's giving mixed messages. And more importantly, what you're seeing is just dramatic shifts. What the markets like is consistency, right? Um, not dogmatic, but consistent. And what we're seeing happen by central banks today is radical shifts, right? You've seen it with the BOE earlier this year. You saw it with Powell last week. Um, and so I just feel like this added rhetoric coming out of global central banks is just a, a vol event, honestly. It's very difficult to understand. You consider it a vol event, other people consider it to be much more material, something that's going to be living with us through next year. Morgan Stanley's Ellen Zetner saying this, we now expect, in fact, this is from Bank of America, we now expect the Fed to end its QE program in March. We still expect liftoff in June, but March is in play. Joe Kerry Hall wanted to come to you on that Bank of America quote, because I know that you are less constructive on the equity market. You think Tina is facing a massive threat right now because you believe this central bank has to hike. Yeah, we, we're only forecasting a, a you know, flattish market through next year. We have a 4,600 year-end target on the S&P 500. And you, know, you have uh, the, the Fed tightening into a overvalued market. Um, you have very bullish equity sentiment. Um, you have earnings growth slowing to, to trend. We actually think dividend growth will be better than earnings growth next year. Um, but the, you know, with, with the rise in, in rates, we, we would expect that the, the argument, Tina, as you mentioned, the, there is no alternative argument for equities gets gets more called into question if, if cash yields are rising so that you know dividend yield on the the s p 500 isn't you know as attractive as it once was so you know for for us we we see more opportunities within pockets of the market uh, rather than just buying the s p 500 for next year Jill, we've had a conversation earlier in the program and i appreciate we had some technical problems and our apologies for that Patrick Palfrey, much more constructive. Greg Peters as well, suggesting that there are limits to how high the Federal Reserve can go. Can you give me some insight into how high you think they go with the team and economics over at Bank of America and what you think the break point will be for the index level story? Well, we, we expect, and as you mentioned earlier, that the, the liftoff is expected to be in, in June based on our economist's forecast, but it could be as early as March. Um, obviously, the, the, the taper timeline ha has been accelerated, and we're, we're expecting that they, they hike rates three times next year and then continue the pace of, of tightening into the year after. So, you know, equity markets tend to, to actually be, be up during the heightening cycle, but, you know, as, as we, we mentioned earlier, Earlier, we, we are seeing very elevated valuations, Fed tightening into an overvalued market, um, you know, which can be more detrimental. The, you know, for, for small caps, which is an area that, that I cover, we, we also you know, do tend to see rather, uh, you know, lackluster returns once the Fed starts tightening. So, so that is one potential risk. Um, but to the, the, I think one of the big differences today is that, you know, small caps are actually trading at a pretty hefty discount to, to larger stocks. So it's actually the only tightening cycle that we're heading into besides 1999, where smaller stocks weren't expensive versus larger stocks. So, yeah. um, you know, potentially one, one difference in going into this tightening cycle.